In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, a very warm welcome to our act of spiritual communion for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Our Gospel reading is a very well-known reading this morning, the parable of the sower. So we'll be thinking about that and how God sows seeds of grace in our own lives in a few moments. Let's begin in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to our time of penitence and confession. So let's just hold some moments of quiet and bring before God those things weighing heavy on our own hearts this morning. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like the morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, grant you his pardon and his peace now and forever. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is, as I said, the parable of the sower taken from Matthew chapter 13. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they have no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. I wonder what kind of ground you feel you're on this morning. It's been a really tough few months. It's been a really tough year for many of you I know. Times were pretty tough already. We can come to God, can't we, with a kind of resignation, a kind of feeling that this is my lot. 
But actually God says there that he lavishes abundant seeds of grace and hope and comfort and love and encouragement on us all. Only God as farmer is so wasteful that he rains down seed on areas that are hard and rocky and resistant and thorny. That wastefulness of love and grace and blessing pouring out, raining down on each one of us. So if you feel in a hard place today, if you feel choked by a lack of freedom, if you feel lacking in clarity as to a way forward, know that God is with you in that. God is with all of us. God rains his blessing down on everyone. He includes all. He blesses all. And he nurtures and loves all. And also as we go out as people of faith, as we witness to our faith in the world, we don't know what is hard ground. We don't know what is receptive soil. So we too are to reign our words, our seeds of grace, our words of comfort and love, regardless. God is the farmer. We are merely there as the channels of his will. So as we begin to go out and about, let's be conscious of our role in also being channels of God's grace, God's care, God's love and encouragement to others. Let us pray. I'm going to suggest today that you might want to do a more active form of prayer during the day, perhaps bearing in mind some of the words that we're going to use now in our prayers this morning. Perhaps take time to walk in your garden or the local park or a field nearby and consciously feel the ground beneath your feet. Perhaps pick up a stone, perhaps look for a thorn or a, a leaf, touch the earth. Reflect on what type of ground you most identify with at the moment and perhaps let that inspire your prayers. To God. Let us pray. Jesus the sower, whatever I am today, whatever the mix of path, rock, thorns or soil, help me to become good ground. Good ground for you, for your word and for your presence. Lord of life, you sow extravagantly, generously, some would say foolishly, but we cry glory. You sow your word, your promises, your salvation and yourself. Glory to your mercy and grace and goodness. You save us from the stealing, shallow, choking thorns. Glory to you. Thank you, God, for your deliverance and your power. And you make our lives good, rich soil ready for your seed. In you we grow up and increase and yield. Glory to your goodness and your faithfulness to each one of us. We pray today, Lord, for those who feel they are on hard ground. For those who are suffering illness. For those who feel lost. For those who grieve. So we pray seeds of grace and hope into longing hearts, weary bodies and aching souls for your name's sake. 
Heavenly Father, we rejoice in you and in being your harvest. Help us to always bear your good and lasting fruit for the honour and glory of your name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray our prayer of communion in separation. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Lord Jesus Christ, life giver and good physician, here you meet us in our need. In a world marred by corruption and marked by death, draw us into true life. By your selfless sacrifice, help us to live for others and not ourselves. May we, who cannot now receive you sacramentally, embrace you more fully in our hearts, minds and souls. Help us unite ourselves to you in spirit, so that we may be drawn closer to those from whom we are isolated in body. Through sharing your life given up in death for us all, May we grow together in love into a richer and more profound communion of life. Amen. And we pray the collect for the day. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And some words of God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.